What's up everyone, Nayflyer here and welcome back to my top 5 mods of the month series. In this video we will be looking at the 5 best mods that were created for Skyrim on PS4 in September 2018. This month we have another great follower mod, a race mod, an armour mod, a jewellery mod and an amazing city overhaul mod. So make sure you stick around for the whole video and if you want to see all future episodes of this series make sure you subscribe and press the notifications bell button next to the subscribe button to be notified when a new episode releases. With all that said, let's get started with number 5. Up first at number 5 we have Heroic Knights Follower by Imperial Agent 1992. Imperial Agent makes the top 5 yet again with another brilliant follower mod. This time we don't just get one follower, we get two new followers, a female knight called Moira. Fans of Fallout 3 will recognise that name. Huh. Did you know the human body can survive without the stomach or spleen? Oh, <laughs> what's up? And a male knight called Ruin. Found at the Riften Stables, these knights are equipped with full enchanted steel plate armour, enchanted steel swords and enchanted crossbows. These knights are extremely strong and capable of taking a lot of damage. They will level up with you all the way to level 300, however they will start at level 50. So if you are significantly lower level than 50, they will be quite overpowered, so it's best to wait until you are at least level 40 to 50 before you start using them. Moira has access to three different shouts, Call of Valor, Dragon Ice Storm and Unrelenting Force. Ruin also has access to three different shouts, however he uses Dragon Fireball instead of Dragon Ice Storm, but he also uses Unrelenting Force and Call of Valor. They both have the same perks, which are Bladesman, Extra Damage, Bonebreaker, Fighting Stance, Champion Stance, Hack and Slash, Custom Fit, Limb Splitter, Deadly Bash, Skull Crusher, Deep Wounds, Tower of Strength, and Devastating Blow. Whilst testing the two followers, I noticed that they both tend to favour the crossbow, allowing you to get up close and personal whilst the knights pick enemies off from a distance with their crossbows and using shouts. If you like the sound of an awesome and powerful heavy armoured knight follower that can use shouts, give this mod a try. At number 4 we have Amazing Race Tweaks, Breton by Spookrates. This mod makes Bretons actually interesting to play. In vanilla Skyrim, Bretons are probably the most boring race. The only thing special about them is that they have elven blood. Who the hell would want to play as a human with elven blood when you can just be an elf or one of the actually interesting human races? This mod makes Bretons unique by giving them a bunch of awesome and useful powers. These powers include... Oblivion Absorption adds a leveled Absorb Magicka enchantment to weapons for 60 seconds. The more Conjuration perks you have, the more Magicka it absorbs. You can do this as often as you want with any unenchanted weapon, one-handed, two-handed, bow or crossbow. With the Oblivion Deflection power, every time you block, a ward will automatically cast, which blocks damage from spells as long as you continue to block. You can use the power as often as you like with any shield or weapon, even if it's enchanted. Oblivion Detection can also be used as often as you want. Use the power to detect all Atronachs and Familiars in the area and see them through walls for 30 seconds. Oblivion Disposition can be used once a day. Use the power to make all Conjuration spells cost 50% less to cast and last up to 5 minutes. Oblivion Dominion can also be used only once a day. Use the power to resurrect all dead corpses around you. They will follow you into battle for 5 minutes. Oblivion Expulsion can be used as often as you want and it adds a leveled Banish Daedra enchantment to your weapons for 60 seconds that sends summoned Atronachs and Familiars back to Oblivion. This works with any unenchanted weapon. Oblivion Mass Expulsion can be used once a day. Use the power to send all Atronachs and Familiars around you back to Oblivion. Oblivion Subjugation can be used once a day, it makes any hostile Atronach or Familiar an ally who will turn against the one who summoned it and fight for you. Oblivion Siphon can be used as often as you want, equipping an unenchanted weapon and activating the power adds a leveled Soul Trap enchantment to the weapon for 60 seconds, which fills a Soul Gem when the target it strikes dies if you have an empty Soul Gem in your inventory. Oblivion Summon lets you make a familiar of any animal you kill, as often as you like, use the power to target the corpse of a dead animal, it summons a ghost of the animal to follow you and fight for you for 24 hours. The animal familiar will never flee, but fearlessly fight for you, even if it's a fox or a goat. 
It will have the same health and do the same damage as the animal it was before it died, plus it will have ghost abilities, giving it 100% resistance to poison and frost, and 50% resistance to other damage. You can summon familiars from more than 30 animals you kill. Familiars of stronger animals require you to either have required conjuration perks, or a minimum level to summon them. You can find a full list of the levels and perks required for different animals on the mod description page. You don't just get powers, you also get oblivion comprehension, which causes you to learn all conjuration skills 50% faster. This stacks with the mage stone, so if you also have the mage stone blessing, you learn conjuration skills 70% faster. All of this adds up to make Bretons the best choice for a conjuration build and gives them some unique features that they desperately needed. Looking for an excuse to start a new conjuration build? Download this mod. Next up at number three, we have Dawnguard Dusk Knight Weapons and Armor by LBGSHI. This mod adds a brand new recolored set of Dawnguard armor to Skyrim, complete with its own backstory. The mod description reads, In an age long past, the most fearsome members of the Dawnguard were known as Dusk Knights. Donning night black armor infused with the essence of slain vampires, the Dusk Knights struck terror into the hearts of the undead across Skyrim. Although the fate of the Dusk Knights, like that of the Dawnguard itself, is shrouded in the mists of time, an old story says that when the final Dusk Knight retired, he placed his equipment in a chest deep within Dead Drop Cave, which can only be reached from within Fort Dawnguard. The armor looks horrifying, it's almost pure black covered in what can only be described as creepy green gloop. The Dawnguard are meant to be the good guys, but this armor looks really evil. Dusk Knight weapons have the same damage output as ebony weapons, but are slightly faster. Dusk Knight armor has the same armor rating as ebony armor, but wearing a full set of Dusk Knight armor grants attack and defense bonuses against undead and a total immunity from disease, without taking up any enchantment slots meaning you can add your own enchantments to all pieces along with the existing bonuses. This is a really good armor mod and I really appreciate that it has its own backstory that makes Dead Rock Cave so much more interesting and actually worth exploring. If you are planning on playing through the Dawnguard questline, consider this mod. The penultimate mod on this top 5 list is Jewelry of Power by Daraman. This mod adds 21 uniquely enchanted pieces of jewelry in the miscellaneous category that can be crafted at an anvil or a forge. 13 of the items can be disenchanted to learn their unique enchantments and are noted as such. These enchantments can be applied to any piece of armor you own. The mod also adds 6 recipes to craft flawless gems from 3 of their lesser counterparts at a smelter. The 21 new pieces of jewelry are the Ring of Magnus, the Ring of Nocturnal, the Ring of Sithis, the Ring of the Harbinger, the Amulet of Speed, the Amulet of the Void, the Amulet of Water Walking, Crafter's Amulet, Dragonborn Ring, Expedition Necklace, Invisibility Necklace, Magic Amplification Ring, Necklace of Commerce, Night Eye Necklace, Sorcerer's Ring, Spell Barrier Necklace, Spell Block Necklace, Thief Ring, Warrior's Necklace, Weapon Speed Amulet, and finally Luke's Ring. All of these different rings, amulets, and necklaces have their own unique enchantments, and they're all really powerful. I think this mod is really good for roleplaying and for specific builds. For example, if you're doing a Dark Brotherhood build, you would use the Ring of Sithis, because it gives you a bunch of enchantments and bonuses that would help you during a Dark Brotherhood questline. So I really like this mod, really unique, really interesting enchantments on all of the different pieces of jewellery that really spices up gameplay and just makes things a little bit more interesting. And finally, the best mod for Skyrim on PS4 that released in September is The Great Cities by Soldier of War, uploaded to Bethesda.net by Harry Honey. This is a compilation of four city overhaul mods by Soldier of War, and all of them are absolutely incredible. They completely reimagine Winterhold, Morthal, Dawnstar, and Falkreath, making them feel like actual cities, not the empty villages that they feel like in vanilla Skyrim. I'm just going to show you each city and read out the descriptions of them from the mod page, as they do a much better job than I ever could of explaining each overhaul. Winterhold. If you're here for sightseeing, well then you've seen the sights, might as well head somewhere warmer, Winterhold Guard. The first time you entered Winterhold, you probably thought it was nothing more than a little village. When you advance through the story, you learn that Winterhold was once an epic city, but most of it fell into the sea after a massive event known as the Great Collapse. If you compare the lore to the city in-game, it just doesn't seem right. 
Winterhold is an ancient place dating back to the First Era. It was founded by Shalador the Archmage, the same man who created the infamous Labyrinthian. Winterhold continued as a wealthy and prosperous city, rivaling solitude in strength and power. It was even the capital of Skyrim during the reign of Borgias in the First Era. Winterhold has seen better days though. The Winterhold we see today is just a shadow of its former glory. It all ended with the Great Collapse. Most of the city just fell, being swallowed by the sea. Now the only reason the city still exists is because of the college, although most Nords blame the college for the Great Collapse. How is a massive and important city, once the capital of Skyrim, rivaling solitude and strength and power, reduced to nothing more than a few wooden buildings? Where are the gigantic walls that once protected the city? Where are the ruins? This mod hopes to restore some of Winterhold's glory, to give Winterhold the attention it really deserves. The aim of the mod is to add immersion to every visit of Winterhold, as well as adding a few nooks and crannies to explore. Interiors remain unchanged. Morthal. For many people, Morthal is an undesirable place. A place where the youth leave the moment they are able to. It's a dangerous location next to a swamp filled with monsters that certainly doesn't help. For others, Morthal is an idyllic place far removed from the dangers and worries of the world, a small town in the middle of nowhere. Whatever the people of Skyrim may think of Morthal, when we see it in game, it's just disappointing. It is still supposed to be the hold capital of the largest city of Holmarch. It doesn't even have any defences. Riverwood, a town founded mere generations ago, has better defences than the capital of Hjalmarch. The great city of Morthal tries to remedy this. It adds gates, watchtowers, a stockade around the city, and a unique bridge. It also adds detailing around Morthal to try and make the city feel more lived in. It tries to keep that small town feel, Morthal is still one of the smallest of the hold capitals after all, but at the same time it makes it feel more city-like. The great city of Morthal tries to close the major gap between major and minor hold capitals just to the point that it all makes a bit more sense and adds that tiny tad of immersion. This mod doesn't add houses or NPCs and the interiors remain unchanged. Dawnstar Dawnstar is a major port city and one of Skyrim's most important trade centres. It lies about halfway between Solitude and Winterhold, and is the last port before Windhelm that is not icebound. So how is this great centre of trade represented in game, with a few wooden houses and a single ship? Even Nordic dungeons look more impressive than one of Skyrim's ancient cities. The great city of Dawnstar tries to improve Dawnstar by adding fortifications and an expanded port area. It tries to accentuate the differences between the upper district, which houses the Jarl and guard barracks and focuses on defence, and the lower port area, which focuses on port activity and trade. This mod does not add any new NPCs or houses, the goal is just to add a little more immersion to every visit of Dawnstar and filling in the huge gap between minor and major cities. Interiors remain unchanged. And finally, Falkreef. Falkreef is the hold capital of Falkreef Hold and is famous for its legendary graveyard. In fact, the graveyard was there before the city. Falkreef is the site of many ancient battles, monuments were built then and even nowadays the most impressive graveyard in Skyrim. It's supposed to be the largest and most impressive graveyard in Skyrim, but it always felt like the major city cemeteries and your average Nordic tomb were larger. They certainly look more interesting. The mod author always liked Falkreef but still found it a little underwhelming compared to the major five cities. Falkreef Hold borders Cyrodiil and was once part of it, and thus has some imperial influence. The great city of Falkreef adds new fortifications that would make the imperials proud. It expands the graveyard, adds more Nordic architecture to give it that ancient feel, and a tomb. It also tries to add more medieval feel to the city, like the cities in Cyrodiil have, while still having that Nordic touch. With this mod, the mod author hopes to make Falkreef feel more like a proper city, and add a little more immersion to every visit. It does not add any NPCs, and interiors are unaltered. That will take us to the end of this video. I do hope you enjoyed it or found it helpful in some way. If you did, please leave a like and hit subscribe and click the notifications bell button next to the subscribe button to be notified every time I upload a new video. If you want to help me make more and better videos, consider supporting me on Patreon like Kingdoms of Man. Thank you so much for your support, Kingdoms of Man. I'll see you in the next video. May Talos guide you.